We the spiritual assassins. Like we do this galaxy to galaxy. Imagine how the Green Berets move. That's that's who we are spiritually. Our brother Zeus slash Satan elected to go against us. That's what this is all about. Because once you came here, Satan know who you is too. Remember, he the <clears throat> feel me. Oh, okay, right. It makes sense. But that's why I'm so humble too. And they testing the dark matter energy levels. Because they're going to hit you with the nanobot anyway. Uh-uh. <laughs> you are not a god. You are not one of the original 23 scientists. You don't need to remember that. Your name is going to be Rashad Jamal White. You know I ain't lying. No, babe, you're not lying. Six people missing for months after following this alleged cult leader. Winner not real. The true name is a weapon. The true name of winner is called Sub-Zero Technology. Right now, Rashad Jamal is serving an 18-year prison sentence. Pay attention to your kids. Don't let that, that person wrestle and lay on them or do all that. They keep bringing up his girlfriend. I don't even know what she looks like. I pray you get this letter. These people want to kill me. They will not let me practice my religion or spirituality. You are very, very smart goddess. Signed, Rashad Jamal. The course fucked up when they let Rashad walk on rap. It's that good guy talk. I've been detained since May 3rd. Currently being held in Barrow County Jail. And investigators believe all of them have joined a spiritual cult. Damien, they say that you killed your mom and injured two family members with a sword. Did you do that? You know, you could drink it, Aaron. I have done it myself. Why is it everybody on a spiritual journey is conspiracy theories are crazy? A black sheep, why is that? Today, I want to talk about Rashad Jamal. I need to talk about it because there's really a lot of similarities between this case and another video I did about Nature Boy, who is another uh, social media spiritual teacher, some people say cult leader, and then there's some criminal things that happen that are also similar. And then this one has some other stuff that's kind of like way out there. Basically what's going on is that Rashad Jamal is currently in prison and he's in prison for SA charges. The mother of his child accused him of doing this to her daughter, but that is not the child they share. It's her daughter from a previous relationship. She accused him of doing these things with her daughter and it ended up going to trial and he got convicted. Then on top of that, there are these other cases of people who are said to be followers of his. They ended up committing murders as if that wasn't crazy enough. Then all of a sudden earlier this year, there were all these news stories about how six people who were like members of his cult are missing. Some people say that he's guilty and responsible for some of these things. And then some people say it's that he's innocent and he's being targeted. He himself did a statement from prison where he said that he was basically being crucified like Jesus and Michael Jackson. Princess Diana spoke out and ended up dead in a car crash. Michael Jackson warned us from Stone's life. It don't matter if it's black or white and they don't really care about us. He was killed by his doctor. So I want to do what I usually do on my channel which is I want to give you guys the facts, okay? Then we're going to talk about the conspiracy theories, and there are a lot in this case. And then you can decide for yourself. This video is sponsored by Scentbird, a fragrance subscription service, and they have designer niche fragrances that cost up to hundreds of dollars. What I usually tend to go for is fruity, citrusy, fresh, white flowers, so like jasmine, orange blossom, tuberose. Don't really like anything that's like too incense-y or boozy or spicy, things that make me go <laughs> So let me tell you what I got. You open it like that, very easy. Don't mind my hand shaking. I've had a lot of caffeine today. You twist it, also it's gold, so I mean hello, and then you spray. It's Delina La Rose, Parfait de Marly. That's probably not even how you say it. I'm, just, I'm so annoying. I, oh. That's good. Don't steal this from me. This is going to become my signature scent. Soft wood, white musk, vetiver, Turkish rose, and pear. You know this one? 
You know this one. For me, a couple sprays like this, it's done. This is like a 30 day supply and it has like the locking feature and then you take it out and you spray it. And they're like, what's that? And you're like, oh, it's a parfum de Marie de Lina Blah, blah, blah. And they're like, what did you say? Are you coughing? And I'll be like, yeah, <clears throat> it's usually $17 a month, but right now they have a promotion going on. And if you use the coupon code Jasmine55, you will get 55% off your first month which is a little over $7. Click the link in my description to get this discount code. It's only available in the US and Canada right now. Try it out, get experimental. Anyway, thank you to Scentbird for supporting my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and back to the video. So the whole thing really, we can kind of say starts in 2016, which is when Rashad Jamal posted his first video on YouTube. He was trying to be a rapper. The first song, it's like very typical, like mainstream kind of rap. It wasn't spiritual or anything at that time. Bottles popping and chopper singing sound like the opera. My flavor short with high heels and love sipping flavor. the streets all day. We making moves, sipping coconuts around. A year after that, he moved to Atlanta. He's originally from Chicago. He moved around a lot because there are cases against him. It says prosecutors also noted that Jamal had previous convictions out of Wisconsin for domestic battery, as well as disorderly conduct and strangulation and suffocation in a domestic abuse case in 2018. According to Rashad, when he was pursuing his rap career, career in Atlanta, he became disillusioned with the industry. And then remember COVID happened and then George Floyd's death. And this really sort of sparked something in him where he really is anti like vaccine and the COVID and the 5G and all of that. And then on top of that, like the racial injustice and what happened. And that's when his music changed. He made a song that he uploaded in 2020 and it's called God Talk. God Talk, God Talk. Okay. My algorithm's different, they speaking about going viral. And yes, I'm a star NASA predicted my arrival. I will never feel no oppressor. Black God, who I let him shit me, they'll bury me with my ancestors. The course fucked up when they let Rashad walk. This actually is the most popular video on his channel. It has, I think, over 300,000 views and really changed the direction of what he would do online and in real life, I guess, too. I did notice that there was a gap on YouTube from when he posted God Talk. It was like a year, which was during, you know, the height of COVID. And then he comes back in 2021 and he posts two videos not far from each other that are really different. First, he posts another music video, like song, and it's called Black Power Moves. But then 10 days, after that, he posts this repost of a video taken of him basically having like a, a freak out, like he's screaming and yelling at a Publix uh, in Fayetteville, Georgia. And it was posted on Instagram by a channel called ATL Uncensored. And like someone's filming him at one point when they're filming him, you can hear them say like, that's crazy. Whoa, that's crazy. Ever since then, his content changed. Because if you look at his channel before, it was all his music. Now he still does music, which is like that spiritual kind of conscious rap, I guess you would call it. But also he is like teaching and preaching his beliefs. Also in 2021, around this time, he starts his University of Cosmic Intelligence, also known as UCI. Other people say it's a cult. Basically what it is, it's really a, a website that is sort of like a subscription service for his courses. 
you see that there is like three tiers of the courses that you can get, which gives you different levels of access and content of his teachings, uh, you know, even a shout out or something on his uh, Instagram. And then also you can buy products like crystals and necklaces. I think there was a, some soap on there that was like $111 and 11 cents. I'm guessing it's like charged or blessed or something, but basically he's selling his courses, his teachings and his products, which is super, super, super common in the world of like online spirituality. So, okay, whatever, fine, no big deal. There's a million people doing this. When it comes to his teachings, this is where he's very similar to Nature Boy, because if you watch that video, he talks about carbonation was what they used to be called at one point, and they're carbonated beings and like melanated as well. And the idea was that like the sun is um, very powerful and the more sort of melanin you have like protection from the sun to handle the sun that's like where the power comes from and maybe am i saying that wrong correct me if i'm wrong with um rashad's uci it is very heavily black and latino people who are the carbonated beings and white people are not carbonated beings they're not melanated essentially in a nutshell okay he is a god he is actually from the planet Kai. Descendants of the planet Kai are being oppressed by the reptilian aliens who are on Earth. And they're using nanobot technology to make them avatars. He is waking people up to this fact and letting them know that you are actually a god and a goddess as well. You got to understand that we spirit, we the spiritual assassins, like we chase them. Galaxy the Galaxy, the Awoken Ones, Princes of Royalty, Astral Royalty, all of you. Our brother Zeus slash Satan elected to go against us. That's what this is all about. Because once you came here, Satan know who you is too. Remember, he the... <clears throat> so your souls are attracted to me because of this original place I set in the cosmos of being one of the original 23 scientists. You got First you got Source, and then you got the Divine Feminine Nine, and under them... You got the original 99 souls that was created, and it was all divine feminine energy because there wasn't no masculine energy created yet. And then you got the original 23 scientists, which were the very first 23 masculine energies created and were the sciences that was used to, to, erect, to construct the cosmos. So the original moons, not the fake ones. We numbered the multiverses and then decided how many... Um, universes there would be within that multiverse, how many planets would be inside the galaxies and how many realms would be inside the planets. Why do you think I could tell y'all that? But that's why I'm so humble too. And we design all these universes, but we didn't design that sixth one. See what I'm saying? The sixth one was designed by Satan and Zeus after he couldn't stay here anymore. We was beefing about him trying to create the human beings and the way he was going about it. Uh oh. <laughs> you are not a god. You are not one of the original 23 scientists. You don't need to remember that. Your name is going to be Rashad Jamal White. Yeah, let's not up, send him to jail. Let's send him to jail. This is how they do us because we the assassins. So we're like, listen, they don't let the mom and the dad go in the room where they get a shot to the baby. They take them in there, be a motherfucker. They got the candles out already and everything. And they be on that. They hit you with the shots. It be a person that had already cast that little shit in the hair and get you back. It's an in and out. It's a facts. Boy, I'm putting y'all on real divine Cosmic information, L, these people don't want you to know. You know I ain't lying. No, babe, you're not lying. Mm -hmm. I'm very careful about the information I reveal to y'all. Because this shit. There are a lot of beliefs that um, he mentions. You know, there's a lot of like. For example, he believes that the rainbows are fake. They're actually like portals to uh, Stargate, I think is what he calls them, Stargates to alternate dimensions, but that the rainbows are like controlled by the reptilians. So things aren't what they seem. You know, he's like the Mississippi River is really the Nile River. I also noticed when I was watching his videos that he references a lot of like movies and then he'll be like, it's really like that, like the Matrix or... And they test in the dark matter energy levels because they're going to hit you with the nanobot anyway. And they showed that in the Matrix when they fucking, they bothered him, they bugged him and the fucking bug came out of his shit. 
or you got them bitches in you for real. Just like they showed you in the movie fucking Soul. You had your new souls, your brand new souls. Remember he jumped down there with the brand new souls? That's real. That's real. It really, it's really like that. And fucking, um, Dr. Strange. Boy, Dr. Strange, cold as hell. Because they telling you about how it goes. If you thought it, that's a reality that was created in the multiverse. And the reality is different from a planet. You got your galaxies, your universes, your planets. You got realities. You got dimensions. You got, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's a higher level of metaphysics, though. What if my mom and my daddy really ain't my mom and my daddy? What if that was a whole made-up story? Like in Salt or the Truman Show. See, that's the thing about the truth. Can you really handle the truth? Also, another one of his teachings is he is against monogamy. Okay. Um, he made some tweets about it that I would like to read. Is it now that it's called X, do we call them X's? He made some X's about them or tweets. I don't know. Anyway, nobody cares. He said, for example, as a black woman slash Latino woman, you are God. You were first. All life force comes from you. This also means you outnumber the man slash gods 10 to one. So this is why polygyny was practiced. You say you don't want to share. Your selfish ways must be dis disintegrated. I think disintegrated was, it's a typo. If we are to rise, I emoji. Then he posts again, this is the same day, uh, about like two hours later. He says, monogamy drains the warrior out of the God. He was designed to hunt, to conquer, to provide, to protect. He was created by the black woman, supreme goddess, to design the cosmos, cosmos, I think you meant to say. He was made head of the kingdom, but his strength is the good goddess. Sorry, now I'm talking in typos. Now imagine more than one. Another thing that he believes in, which I thought was interesting because the person who brought this conspiracy theory out the first time came out later and said that that they made it all up and it was a hoax. And it's the bird spiracy. I don't know if you've heard of this bird spiracy. This guy came out and he basically said that birds don't exist, they're fake, and that they're actually like spy drones by the government <clears throat> to spy on us. And then he ended up getting this huge following of people being like, birds are fake. He came out and like was like, eh, I'm just kidding. Like, I just wanted to see like how far this would go. And like, holy shit, this went far. He also talks about that. We've seen this before, y'all, and never thought nothing of it. But they sitting there actually charging up. These are your government drones. I found this post where he... Uh, on Instagram where he's talking about it. And then one of the comments made me laugh because someone was like... I'm so mad at like, I fed so many birds. Like I used to feed these birds and they feel like betrayed that they were feeding birds that weren't real. Winner not real. The true name, it's a weapon. The true name of winner is called Sub-Zero Technology. They made fake clouds and then they put ice crystals in the clouds. And then they use these fake 5G towers to turn these, to activate these fake ice crystals in these clouds. At this point, he is getting a decent following and it's only going to get bigger. And in 2021, he gets indicted. It is the charge that I told you about earlier where the mother of his child accused him of essaying her other child. Your dirt is catching up to you. Pay attention to your kids. Don't let that, that person wrestle and lay on them or do all that stuff. Please watch your kids. Whatever the case is, y'all have a blessed day. I'm gonna get up off here. So Rashad actually made a video where he responded to these allegations. What? Police running my crib the other, a few weeks ago because my baby mama went and filed the report and told him that I hurt her daughter. Her youngest daughter, who she didn't lie to, told y'all I hurt. She had a fucking open case against the state again in 2018 for the little 10 year old daughter because they said she was abusing her. The little girl went to school with bruises on her and they made my baby mama go in one room and they questioned me. They questioned the youngest daughter, which is Pocahontas. The one she's trying to say, I didn't hurt. And they questioned Ochai. And they asked all of us, is there abuse going on in this house? Or well, if I would have said, yeah, her ass was gone. She 41 on Section 8. But well, what is Rashad Jamal doing on the planet? Right. So, no, it's deeper than my baby mama. They're using her as a medium. This is happening in 2021, right? And at the same time, there's something else happening that I need to talk to you about. And that is a person called Yasmin Hyder. Yasmin Hyder is going to factor into the story majorly because she is going to end up being charged with murder. She is watching. Now, she doesn't start watching him right when he begins, but you can see on her TikTok when her content starts changing because at first she's just like, 
hosting dances and regular, you know, stuff. And then she had this like job at Walmart and then she goes to college. She's from Oklahoma, by the way, she goes to Langston, um, university in Oklahoma. Okay. So I want to start this video off saying peace to the gods and goddesses. Um, I also want to say that we need people that are in Oklahoma or in the Oklahoma region, region, or states over and stuff like that. We need to meet up because it's coming, it's getting close. I'm lost myself and I need a tribe of people to gather information um, and figure it out together because that's the true way of life and of getting back to how we originally was. So I'm in Oklahoma. Um, if anybody else is in Oklahoma and want to meet up, talk about it on DM, it's fine. I'm going to leave my Instagram and my thingy on TikTok. Um, I hope some of y'all see this. I put it out there that my tribe sees this. She enrolled in fall of 2020. And in the spring of 2021, she leaves her university. She kind of loses contact with her family. And also her content starts changing because she starts posting videos of Rashad. They are finna attack everybody house, y'all. Remember in New York, they said they was bringing in the military. And remember I told y'all they have something called winter soldiers. Winter soldiers. These are not regular humans and gods. These are synthetic robots where everybody was making fun of me. <laughs> the Anunnaki are here. The Galactic Confederation is here. Majority of the spaceships that y'all see that people report, that ain't even the Anunnaki. That ain't even the end. That's just the Galactic Confederation. Wait till the liars come through. Wait till the blue avians come from under the ground. Wait till you, you, the, An the Anunnaki. See, we... We would be like half blood Anunnaki. We've been here a little bit. No, wait till you see these pure blood Anunnaki. They're gonna be luminous though, glowing, a hundred feet tall, physique chisel. You think I'm cut? Nah, you ain't seen cut. Wait till you see your ancestors. They here. The Nerubians are here. Planet Nibiru. The Nerubians are here. The Nerubians are the ones who originally salted all the seas. All your seas that you see with salt water in them, the seas were not originally salty. The Nerubians salted the seas a long time ago. And she's even posting things of her, like being like the clouds and the, the sun and, you know, like certain things that he says in his videos, like she is believing and repeating and posting. So first they tried to cover the sun with their dumbass clouds. And then they're covering up most of the Stargate over there with the clouds. They're very active today. There's also another person who was charged in this murder with Yasmin, and that is Crystal Pinkins. Now, Crystal Pinkins was also a follower of UCI and Rashad. These two people separately are following Rashad online. At one point, they're going to link up and they're going to both get charged with murder. And then people are going to start linking that to the cult and the whole thing. It's a whole thing. So just follow with me now. In 2021, Yasmin makes this post where she's kind of asking for someone who has weed uh, in Atlanta. Peace reflections. I'm in Atlanta and I don't have a plug down here and I would love to smoke. So if anybody has a plug, please comment below so we can talk, exchange some information so I can be in contact with your plug. Maybe they'll give you a discount because you referred a friend. You know what I mean? Like, please. Now keep in mind, Rashad and the UCI and stuff, they're based in Atlanta. And also, uh, he really preaches the use of weed, although he does say that it's like polluted with the GMOs, but not as much as like shrooms. They fucked with the weed first, before they even came with AIDS. You know what I'm saying? We set up plantation planets like the Candace Major, which is a planet strictly designed to farm cannabis, which is where it comes from. I think I was able to tell you that, that it comes from the Candace Major star system. And it was brought down here to decalcify the, the pineal glands of human beings. 
to decalcify it, which means open it up because they born with a gel shed. Crack and dope fuck with you physically. It fuck with your body. Weed fucks with your spirit. That's why you get high. Psychedelics, they attack you mentally, which is why they call psychedelics, psych, psyche. And Satan is behind psychedelics just like Satan is behind the GMOs and the weed. The GMO is a poison to the avatar. So the GMOs fuck with you, poison your physical avatar to try to, like I say, kill you. But because we so strong, remember, this was a test they did. So it ain't work. That's why they had to come with crack and AIDS later on. It wasn't the ass kicker. They wanted. I mean, everything they tried was supposed to be the ass kicker. Colored TV. Segre segregate us. Uh, integration. When they allowed us to go to school with them. You know what I'm saying? Allowing interracial marriages. What else was supposed to kill us? We, when they fuck with that. The cocaine, the crack, the hair on. All right. The internet, music, the weed that you're smoking today on this planet has already been tampered with, has already been hit with GMOs. The GMOs were designed to hurt you, but they don't. And that's why I'm telling you, we designed it. The original 23 scientists, we designed the car. That's why I can tell you the detail of the shit. You feel me? Now it is the beginning of 2022, January 16, 2022, when Damien Washam killed his mom with a samurai sword. And he also attacked his disabled uncle who's bedridden and his autistic brother. All three of them were in the home and he, he essentially went on this like rampage. Damien, they say that you killed your mom and injured two family members with a sword. Did you do that? So this is what happened. According to the father, before this murderous rampage happened, he noticed a change in his son. He didn't have mental problems and he didn't have any issues with the law, except he did have a charge, a misdemeanor charge from a while back to do with marijuana. He says that one day when Damien was playing Call of Duty, the video game, you know how you can like chat and talk to people online? He started talking to someone online who told him about Rashad, Jamal, and that after that, Damien started looking up Rashad online and watching his videos. So let me read you quotes from Damien's dad. He said, he had started listening to some crazy group of people like a cult or something. Evidently, he had sent links to his sisters and were telling them about it, talking about the sun and getting energy from the sun. It was just something he got into four or six weeks ago. I don't understand it. He said he was listening to those conspiracy kind of videos and it was dumb as hell. It was stupid. I tried to look at some of these videos and I can't even listen to them. It's so dumb. Lizard people and aliens. He said, I was feeling good because I thought he was done with the gaming, but I didn't know that these videos he was watching were as crazy as they are. My stun, my stun, my son started doing some crazy ass stuff. He said that he was using metal kick bars to block the front and back doors from the inside. And then he said there were these really weird purchases. He said that they were disturbing and deranged items, including a knife, torture type brass knuckles fitted with spikes, a poster of Osiris, the Egyptian god of the underworld, world, and a statue of another Egyptian deity. He ordered that sword, the one that he used in the murder, another knife, other stuff that looked like he was planning to kill us all and burn the house down. I just wish I could ask him now what the heck was all this stuff for. When I opened it up, I was just hurt because maybe it seemed like there was something disturbing going on with him that we didn't pick up on. He ordered something he definitely has absolutely no use for. I can't understand why he would order it unless he was planning to kill us all. The dad didn't see the weapons until after the attack. Before, he had only noticed the fascination with the gods and goddesses and uh, um, the sun and that kind of stuff, which, okay, he thought it was like weird or whatever, but not to the extent of like, oh my God, this is like awful, right? And then he did also notice though that his son spent a lot of money on crystals. So remember that website I told you, the University of Cosmic Intelligence and what they sold? Okay, the dad said, my son must have spent three to $5,000 on crystals. A necklace sells for over $100. It's like 118 Bracelets too. And then you have these crystal spears he was selling. They're almost $300. I've got a box of it here. He says, it just bothers me that I missed it. I should have watched some of those videos myself, but as I see it, I can't sit down and look at that man talk for a whole video. I have to turn it off because it's so dumb. That is what led up 
to the attack. What happened the day of attack? Okay, this is what happened. Damien's father left to go get food. When he was gone, he ended up speaking to his son on the phone who told him that Damien killed mom and that he had attacked the uncle and him. And so they obviously called the cops. And when the cops show up, they say that they found Damien's mom. Her name is Helen. She was already dead when they got there. She was lying down. They said that she had 19, the autopsy found 19 lacerations on her head and her neck and back. Her thumb was like severed off damn near. And then the bedridden uncle with cerebral palsy, he had his teeth knocked out and laceration on his head. And the brother, he had um, slits on his wrist, like, like defensive wounds. So the uncle and the brother survived, although the uncle had to go through a lot of surgery and like couldn't even talk. It was like very, very bad. He was already bedridden, defenseless. And so when the cops showed up, Damien got in a car and drove off. He fled. So then they followed him. They ended up using spike strips to stop the car, but then he hopped out of the car and started running. Then they ended up tasing him. They tased him so bad he was like in a wheelchair. And then when they searched the car, they found the samurai sword that he used in the murder. When I was going through Rashad's Instagram, I noticed that he had um, this photo with like the samurai swords. And then he also has this like class picture, I guess, of like, him and his students, and he's also holding the sword. So I don't know if this guy, Damien, watching this decided, oh my God, like I want a samurai sword, and then just like lost his freaking shit. Once the cops detained Damien and they asked him like, what, what happened? Why did you do that? He said, I just lost it. And then he started talking to them about like the sun God. And he was like, I'm dealing in cryptocurrency. And it's like, it, it, he, he seemed mentally insane. And actually he um, was found legally to be insane. Apparently he got off by reason of insanity. Damien's father feels like Rashad is, I don't know, fully to blame, but he does feel like he is the catalyst that triggered this. You got to understand that we spirit, we the spiritual assassins. Like we hunt shit down and ain't vibrating high and we eradicate it. You are spiritual assassins. That's what you must know. I don't know who we gonna fight, but we gonna start one if it ain't one. It's serious about what we are, spiritual assassins. That's why you, y'all, I'm going to my family, yeah. Some of you, a lot of your family fucking CIA, then you don't even know it. If they place them around you when they know you're a spiritual assassin, there's agents all around us. This rap hole runs very deep. Some of y'all parents ain't y'all fucking parents, man. That's how deep it runs. You feel me? Killed your real parents and put parents around you. My wife, 32, just meeting her real daddy. Well, my brother just getting a chance to meet his mom. So even though you ran everybody, you still feel alone. That's why y'all can get in here and vibe like this. Because your real spiritual family is the people on the spiritual journey. That's your real family. Everybody else has placed agents around you. And those are your real agents. Hubert, who is Damien's dad, he actually said, quote, I think he deserves to die. I think he should die. Talking about Rashad Jamal. A few months after this incident, Rashad was arrested and booked. But like I said, not on connection with that, with what I told you earlier, what his um, baby mama, if you want to say, said about him. It says here, the reason for the booking was child molestation, cruelty to children, deprivation of necessary sustenance, first degree, and there's two charges of that. His accuser, the mother of his child, her name is Darshell Smith, and she did an interview, and I want to read you Quotes from this article that I found where they interviewed her. It says, Smith describes the relationship between her and Jamal as violent and coercive from the start. The two met, she says, when they were both musical artists working out of the same recording studio. Smith says that Jamal was a less a true romantic partner than someone who followed her home from the studio and never left. She alleges Jamal was abusive, claiming he subjected her and her children to screaming rants and once held her at gunpoint. Court records show that Smith filed a family violence petition and a motion for a protective order against Jamal in September of this year. The contents of those records aren't public. Jamal has denied committing family or S violence against Smith or her child. I felt like a hostage every single day for almost three years, she said. 
Smith was also present for Jamal's pivot from aspiring rapper to new age influencer. She says she even helped him set up his YouTube page where the University of Cosmic Intelligence got its start. Quote, that was a good thing for me because he started focusing more on that, truthfully. End quote, she said. Previously, Jamal had been subjecting her and her family to endless lectures. We'd have to sit there while he talked. He was trying to preach to us. She was glad to see that behavior move online and away from the focus on her. She's also watched with concern as Jamal's University of Cosmic Intelligence became a far larger and stranger phenomenon than it once was. She was aware of what she called, quote, weird little meetings, end quote, where UCI followers have gathered across the South for in-person mass meditations. They're doing weird shit, she said dryly. He denies the allegations and he says that she is a liar and jealous and she's a bad mother. And he said some like really crazy shit about her older daughter. When I met Darshell, her oldest daughter, Dariah Smith, who was another slut, just like her mom, the bitch was 14 with tattoos running away. When I came around, she was 14 going on 15. And guess what? At 15, she got pregnant. We paid for that abortion. At 16, she got pregnant. I pay for that abortion. At 17, the little girl got pregnant and we made her pay for it. 18, she pregnant again, 19 with the baby. At the same time that Rashad is booked in, in jail, remember Yasmin? What was that? I should kill everyone and escape? Sorry. The voices. <laughs> and Crystal and how they were like separately following him. Okay, well now they're together. They're, they're linked up now. And they are stranded in Colorado. It says here, Yasmin posted, two goddesses and a star seed are stranded in Colorado. Went to go camping out in the mountains and got snowed in. Had to abandon the car after a search and rescue team came. Just got kicked out of a hotel and sitting in a Dunkin' Donuts. Any assistance would be so appreciated right now. She included Zell and Cash App information. The Cash App ID she provided belonged to Pinkins. And then it said that she posted a photo of a snowy mountain scene and then a second image of herself alongside a woman named Crystal Pinkins and Pinkins' five-year-old son. So they're the two goddesses and he's the starseed. So in May, they're stranded in Colorado. I don't know how, if they got help or what, but all of a sudden you've got several months later, it is now August, 2022, and this is when the shooting thing happens where they get charged with murder. And I'm going to tell you what happened. It was a gag order. Okay. So before this gag order was enforced, the sheriff's office released a statement. They ended up taking it down after the gag order, but I found an article where they had the statement in full and I'm going to read it to you. On Sunday, August 14th, 2022, at approximately 11.30 a.m., 911 notified Clay County Sheriff's Office and dispatched Clay County Rescue Squad and Shinbone Valley Volunteer Fire Department to National Forest Service Road 600-3 near Chiaha Mountain for a 22-year-old male who had been shot in the back. There were no other details on this call that were known at the time it was dispatched. Upon arrival at the scene, Sheriff's deputies, Linville police, and responding emergency personnel found the girlfriend of the shooting victim, 20-year-old Michaela Paulus, performing CPR on her longtime boyfriend, Adam Simji, who had been shot. A black female, later identified as Yasmin Hyder, was laying on the ground nearby. Hyder had suffered several gunshot to her torso. Medical personnel were unable to revive Simji, who died at the scene. It was determined that Hyder had attempted to rob Simji and Paulus at gunpoint and was subsequently shot by Simji, who had a handgun concealed on his person. Hyder was transported from the scene by ambulance to a nearby landing zone and airlifted to a Birmingham hospital where she underwent surgery for her injuries. The initial investigation revealed that a second black female suspect was present during the robbery and had fled the scene on foot after the shots were fired. Over the next several hours, sheriff deputies received information that there may be a group of people living off the grid somewhere in the National Forest. This group of people were reported to be armed and potentially violent. The dog tracking team 
from the Alabama Department of Corrections were contacted and they responded with a tracking team. Aaliyah was also contacted and they responded with a helicopter to provide aerial observation and overwatch for the deputies on the ground. The Clay County Sheriff's Office reached out to nearby authorities, Linville Police, Ashland Police, Heflin Police, and Claiborne County Sheriff's Office, as well as Forestry and Park Rangers for assistance, and all of these agencies responded to this call for assistance. The tracking team led law enforcement, enforcement, enforcement to a large group of tents that had been set up in the National Forest in what appeared to be a base camp. This camp was located approximately half a mile from the scene of the robbery. As law enforcement were approaching the base camp, they observed a black female standing near the tents. As officers were ordering the female to the ground, a five-year-old child ran from the woods holding a loaded shotgun. Law enforcement told the child to put the shotgun down. However, the child continued to the female's location before laying the gun on the ground. The female was taken into custody and later identified as Crystal Pinkins. It was determined that the child was Pinkins' son. Pinkins was arrested and charged with endangering the welfare of a child. Department of Human Resources was notified and they took custody of the child. Law enforcement began trying to put the pieces together as to what had happened that led to the shooting and death of this young man. In the past 48 hours, the investigation revealed that Michaela and Adam were driving down the National Forestry Road 600-3 when they were flagged down by a black female later identified as Yasmin Hyder. Hyder asked the couple if they could give her some assistance to get her car started, which was nearby. When the couple attempted to assist Hyder, she produced a gun and made the couple walk back into the woods. At some point after Hyder walked them at gunpoint into the woods, Simji produced a handgun that was concealed on his person. There was an exchange of gunfire during which the suspect was shot multiple times. Simji was struck by gunfire as well and died at the scene. Michaela was not injured in the gunfire exchange. However, she did suffer mental stress and trauma from witnessing this horrendous act. It was at this time that Michaela realized there was a second black female, later identified as Crystal Diane Pinkins, standing in the woods nearby observing what was going on. The shooter, Hyder, then called out to Pinkins to come help her. After a brief conversation between the suspects, Pinkins fled the scene on foot. Michaela was then able to retrieve her cell phone and call 911 for assistance. After further investigation, Pinkins was charged with one count of murder, two counts kidnapping, and two counts of robbery. She was arrested on those charges and remains in the Clay County Detention Center under bond. Clay County Sheriff's investigation have also obtained warrants against Hyder for the following charges, one count of murder, two counts of kidnapping, and two counts of robbery. Hyder is currently in a Birmingham hospital where, while she recovers from her surgeries under the observation of sheriff's, sheriff's deputies, the weapons used in the crime have been recovered. Okay, so that is a statement from the sheriff. Interestingly enough, after this investigation, all this happened, remember Damien, the one with the samurai sword who killed his mom? Well, the police then reach out to his dad and have him come down because they realized that they were followers of Rashad. They had similar cases, he said, describing people accused of specific crimes who had, he said, investigators told him also been watching Jamal's videos. So they came down to ask me about my son's behavior compared to theirs. The girlfriend, Michaela, she gave a bit more detail. Her version of what happened is basically that they are both college students from Florida. They're going on like summer vacation and they were visiting Alabama for this summer and they wanted to like see the waterfall. She says that they saw Yasmin flagging the, you know, people down for help. She wanted to jump. They said that they spent over 30 minutes trying to help her, that Adam was looking up YouTube videos and that Michaela, her dad is a mechanic, that she even called her dad trying to ask for help. But when they couldn't help her and they told her that, that is when she pulled out the gun and basically decided to rob them. She asked for their phone numbers and their passwords and like sign in information and was walking them to the woods off like where the car was. Michaela said that Yasmin also told her that they were trying to live off grid and living in the woods. According to Michaela, the way that the, the shooting went down was that Adam had the gun on him, but he hadn't pulled it out yet. 
And so there was this moment where she says that Yasmin was like fiddling with the gun or put the gun down. There was this moment where, you know, she was kind of like fiddling with her gun and it wasn't pointed at them anymore. And that Adam took that opportunity to shoot Yasmin and he shot her four times. And that in return, Yasmin shot him and his shot to her, well, the, and her shot was fatal. So according to the court documents, Yasmin was recorded, like someone was recording and Yasmin is heard on this recording after she got shot saying, quote, why did you shoot? It wasn't supposed to be like this. And then also in the court documents, it says that days later, Yasmin was very remorseful and she asked uh, the cops, quote, did he die? I didn't want to hurt anybody. I took his whole life away and now he can't tell his story. So what ended up happening was Yasmin took a plea deal. She pled guilty and as part of her plea deal, she would get 35 years and she would have to testify against Crystal, which she did. And it was through this that it came out, according to Yasmin, that Crystal provided the gun and helped plan this robbery and that she watched everything from the woods and she ran off and then they found her like hours later. What would end up happening is that although it was Yasmin who fired the weapon and actually killed Adam, she got 35 years. Whereas Crystal, who was just hiding in the bushes, she got life. Now, I don't know if that's because she didn't cooperate because her case went to trial. So she was trying to fight the charges versus Yasmin like took the deal. And so they gave her like leniency so she could flip on Crystal. I mean, I don't know. You interpret that how you will, but that's what ended up happening. This incident took place on August 14th, 2022. About two weeks after this incident happened, Rashad Jamal releases this statement like through a phone call that gets posted on YouTube. I have been detained since May 3rd, currently being held in Barrow County Jail, but I'm only allowed out myself for 30 minutes a day. We are injected with nanobiotechnology. I am a God, and all of my people, the black and Latino people are gods. I have never and will never harm an innocent child. It's nothing more than a scandal, a propaganda campaign, the botchery, modern day coin tail pro being used to tarnish my name in an attempt to destroy my image and legacy. That's just clear. I was sent back to this planet to enlighten and inform and increase the frequency of the planet. The original 23 scientists, the 119 soul ever created, spiritual assassin, warrior for righteousness, protector of modern is best, guardian of the gods. Moreover, I'm not some radical or rambunctious pedophile, but I am a free thinker and a free freedom fighter who speaks out against all forms of oppression including white supremacy, police brutality, gun violence, black-on-black -black crime, the race war which puts the blacks versus the whites, sexism, sexism and, the and the degradation of, of, of women slash goddess, the discrimination of the LGBT community, the shaming, and the discrimination of, against fat people. He calls it the State of the Cosmic Union Address. He denies all the allegations, and then in the description as well, there are ways that you can help he says that he wants people to tag the governor, Brian Kemp, and write a letter to his judge, and that the letters need to be peaceful, that uh, they should donate $9 to his family, that the donations will go towards his wife and kids, and uh, the UCI, and his PR company, their cash app, and his PayPal account. They also He also asked for people to subscribe to his website, so like the courses and stuff, and to buy crystals from his website, and to stream his album, and to share this video on like TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And he says to make sure to use all three hashtags when sharing the campaign, and the hashtags are Rashad Jamal, free Rashad Jamal campaign, and protect black activists, activists, <laughs> activists. As a result of all of this, you started to have like the two groups that I told you about earlier, people saying, oh my God, like this is a cult. And did this guy do like this awful SA thing? And 
like this is really bad. There people from this cult are like murdering people. And then other people are saying like, this is a total attack. What they did is not a reflection of him or his teachings has nothing to do with him. And the charges against him are false. Like she's lying. The whole thing is a lie and it's a conspiracy. He's too powerful. You know, the reptilians are doing their nanobot technology. And then what also ended up happening, which I think is very interesting since I'm already looking at this as, is this another nature boy? Because now is there another Rashad Jamal? Because there definitely is a vacuum when you have this space on the internet, okay, for a certain type of point of view of spirituality. And then that person is locked up and not able to produce as much content in the way they were doing before. All these followers, they still wanna hear this message. Someone is gonna come out there and try to garner all these followers. And there were several people actually that came up. There was someone who is called Free Soul. And he comes up a lot when I was doing my research because he was a supporter of Rashad, like he, wanted to do a mass meditation to free him and to support him. And, and he was like a supporter and a follower, but also he had two things in common with him that are very unique. He was also doing his own content, like spiritual content. What's up, man? I got a new download to heal, heal any sickness, cancer, herpes, A is your own water from your own well. Your urine, you know, you could drink your urine. I have done it myself. And as you can see, I look very healthy. I do not get sick. See, what you need is a liquid or water with a negative charge because your body has a positive charge. So we all know what shit look like. We all know about shit. But did you know that you're not even supposed to be shitting? That shit sound crazy. Nah, but like dead ass. Like, you know, me personally, I shit liquid. Solid shit is a clear indicator that you are very unhealthy and very dehydrated. That's why people breath stink. That's that's an example. What's in you? You're breathing up all them toxins. Toxins. The only water we could really trust in this world is our own urine because everything around us is poison. Because your urine has has movement in it, it, has life in it. When I was doing urine therapy, my best, I stopped peeing for like almost a a, a week or two. And he also ended up getting SA charges on him. There was this incident that happened when they were like going to the woods and he was in an area not far from where Rashad was being held in jail. And he wanted to do this meditation to basically help free Rashad. What ended up happening is he's like filming this live and it gets interrupted. I found the article that mentioned the video. When I went to click on the video, the, the video on his page, his page is private. So I requested to follow him. And let me check, did he, uh, probably not. He's probably, he's gonna take one look at my channel and say, bitch, please, not in your dreams. Yeah, I'm probably not gonna get accepted. Whatever, I mean, I don't even know why I tried. It was like shot in the dark. I knew it wasn't going to happen. But this article really describes these videos in detail. So it says here, the video showed a chaotic scene on a clear September morning. Georgia police officer loaded down with weapons and gear was holding open the door of a vehicle, looking exasperated as a group of young black people protested loudly. Y'all see him harassing us in the rising, right? Said the person filming the incident from inside the car. It's eight o'clock in the rising. We're being harassed by racist cop. We're sovereign beings, said another one of the people. Later, after two of the five, Lee 26 and Key 27, to whom were referring to by their online aliases, were arrested, two distinct narratives would emerge. The first shared across social media in the hours and days that followed held that young people who were on a spiritual quest and had rejected a racist materialist society in favor of learning to live in and with nature had been minding their own business and arresting in a car alongside a road in Athens, Georgia, when the police officer, motivated by racism and possibly working at the behest of more powerful forces, singled them out for harassment and abuse.
In the second, documented in a police report, the officer ran the plates on the car after noting its occupants, occupants sorry, behaving in a strange manner and discovered that it was uninsured. Lee, the driver, refused to provide identification or his name and date of birth and exited the car after being told not to, the officer wrote. Key pushed him and scratched and clawed at him. When he attempted to place her in handcuffs, the officer noted that there were a number of machetes in the car, which were turned over to a friend of the pair. Both Lee and Key were charged with obstruction, and Lee was additionally charged with driving with a suspended license and, license and without insurance. Although Free Soul wasn't arrested in this incident, shortly after he did get arrested on SA charges. But it's weird because these charges go way back to when he was also a minor. So he was a minor, and the person who is uh, the accuser uh, is also a minor. Sorry, I don't know why I struggle with that. The journalist who was writing the article said that these charges that he was arrested on, they were old. This is what they said. I want to read you the quote because it said here, court and police records present a different picture of Free Soul's situation. A filing from October says that he was a fugitive from justice, having had a warrant out for him in Bexar County, Texas, dating to an April 2021 indictment on charges of SA of a minor. The first docket entry in the case dates to December 2016, when Free Soul himself would have been a minor. Authorities in both Texas and Georgia declined to provide Motherboard more information on the charges, why they were pursued years after the initial allegation, and his arrest, citing the nature of the offense. People are wondering why now. Is it because he had this incident and they didn't arrest him at the time, but then when they looked into him, I guess they found something that they could get and then they did it, which only feeds into his idea that they are out to get him, not based on the actual thing that they're pinning on him, but because of some other thing. Now, is that other thing because he's spreading truth and enlightenment or is it because he had this sort of altercation with the police and they're trying to catch something on him? I don't know. You decide. His wife, she ended up saying that when they brought him in for this, they were asking him about like Rashad Jamal and the cult. And this also leads into this conspiracy thing, because remember I told you about the bird spiracy, how Rashad Jamal talks about, you know, that birds aren't real, they're drones. Well, there's this video that again, because I wasn't accepted to, um, view his page, which is totally his right. What the fuck? And it says here though, in the article on September 29, free soul posted a video that has since loomed large in the growing folklore around his arrest. Where is the blood? He asked as he flashed a machete at the camera. He then cut a dead bird in half. This is the bird. He declared nothing, no insides, no blood. This shit's fake y'all. I killed it and caught it. His wife exclaimed knowingly off camera, CIA getting exposed for real today, he said, claiming that the bird had no blood and no organs and that its feathers were plastic, as Ari and Tehuti, Tehuti marveled. Several days later, Ari would directly connect Free Soul's arrest to his having proved that they put fake birds out to surveil people. She said, he caught a surveillance video bird and exposed it on social media yesterday, and today they arrested him for some random shit he didn't do. They're trying to keep him silent. They don't want us all coming together and taking a stand to fight for our freedom from the enslavement they have us all under with mind control and fear. When this bird video and the arrest and all that happened, okay, you had more people being like, oh my God, it's a conspiracy. Like the birds are fake. They're spying on us. He found out, he tried to tell us, and then they locked him up. So now we get to August, 2023, and two things happen in August, 2023. Why am I talking like that? Rashad gets sentenced. He got 18 years in prison, plus 22 probation, total of 40 years. I pray you get this letter. These people want to kill me. This prison and town is ran by the KKK. They will not let me practice my religion or spirituality. Once again, he mentions about the money on the books, but he does have money on his book as of right now. I told you I need money out of my bank account on my book. I'm not saying you haven't tried, but please try harder. In my eyes, you are my soulmate. I miss your smile. 
looking into your beautiful soul through those big eyes, uh, watching you play Madden and actually win. Yes, I actually win on Madden. You are very, very smart goddess. You support me and allow me to lead. And I led us all the way to the Super Bowl, just like I promised I would. On 2-23-24, you said a lot had happened in the last month since we spoke, yet you told me little to nothing. When he did talk to me, he did most of the talking. So I couldn't even tell him some things I want to tell him. I want you, mom, pops, the PR team, the university, the haters, Satan, and the fallen to know how I feel about everything. I am being did the same way they did Jesus. How long will they mourn me? I ask myself these questions from my torture room in tears. Um, Sign Rashad. He filed like a request for an appeal and a new trial and th th this is all sort of ongoing, but he's in prison. Also in August, 2023 is when six members of his group or followers went missing. What happened is there are six people, two of which are kids. Michaela and her three-year-old daughter, Malaya Wickerson, Michaela Thompson, Gary L. German, and her three-year-old son, Ashton Mitchell, and Naaman Williams. They were living in a rental home near Lambert International Airport on Graham Lane and had joined a cult following the teachings of Rashad Jamal. And their family members are very upset because they feel like they've been taken advantage of and that they exploit their mental health. She was uh, probably suffering from postpartum depression, meeting these people online they just preyed on her weakness she sort of slipped into this depression started watching these videos online and she feels like that's when everything changed all of a sudden she started to pull away from the family and she moved into a house with people she met online and then in march of 2023 michaela's mom said that michaela's boss called her to tell her that you know your daughter quit your her job when the mom asked her she was like yes, I'm starting my own business. And then the mom drove by the house to check up on her unannounced and saw that there were people there. And Michaela was very upset and told her mom, like, don't just, you know, show up like this. She, from time to time, when she like wouldn't hear from Michaela and stuff, she would call the police to do a wellness check or a welfare check. And they would go and talk to her and they would say, it's fine, whatever. And that's it. Well, then all of a sudden she just like didn't hear from Michaela at all. And that's when she worried. And that's when, you know, they realized that they're gone. The neighbors said that they were acting weird in that house. They said that they would like be outside naked and like in the rain and that they would meditate in front of the sun, which is like not that weird. I guess it was the naked thing. Then they said they were always like digging things up and burying things. And they just felt like this is weird. Then they just vanished. They just disappeared. The family members started asking about them and telling police. And when police got to the house, they said that it looked like they had just, quote, gone to the store. They said that there was still food in the microwave. There was laundry in the washing machine still. There were several valuables that were left behind, including, including sorry, a closet full of shoes worth thousands of dollars. They also found an altar and items wrapped in copper. When they investigated further, they found that all of the people who are missing, other than the two, like, babies, other than them, the adults were all followers of Rashad, and they posted online about following Rashad and the UCI and all of that. All their family members basically say a similar story. They would basically all of a sudden change their name, and cut off all contact and they stopped like going to work. They maxed out all their credit cards and then they just disappeared. Michaela Thompson, she changed her name to Antu Anum Ahmad. Naman Williams, he changed his name to Anubis Aramian. And Michaela Wickerson, she changed her name to In Intuahma Aquama Antil. And then also Jarelle, she changed her name to Anatari Anu Ariel. They were last seen at a Quality Inn in St. Louis. They were there from August 2nd to August 6th. 
when police first saw that like valuables were left behind and food in the microwave and clothes in the washing machine, they were like, oh my God, did something bad happen to them? Were, were they met with foul play? But then they feel like maybe they intentionally wanted to disappear and I guess leave everything behind and go off grid because they turned off all their phones and they said that the police said that they tried to send them money via cash app and they haven't collected it. They're just gone. He said, it's like they don't want to be found. They shut off their phones. They shut off their social media. They shut off everything. Because all of them had ties to Rashad in the sense that they followed him, Rashad was asked in an uh, interview, like uh, I think it was the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Yeah, they did a telephone interview with him and they said that he said, quote, I am pretty sure I have never met these people. He said he doesn't know who comes in and out of his lives. And it, like he, he, he doesn't, he can't control that. And he doesn't know them. He doesn't know anything about it. Another one of the missing people, her mom, she came out and she said that, um, she just started acting weird and started uh, quote going outside with a blanket and meditating and saying things about high frequency, low frequency, and cosmic husbands. Said she was always quoting things that Rashad Jamal would say, and then all of a sudden she said that she's leaving. And I said, "You don't know where you're going. I'm, I'm something. I just got a bad feeling about this." Jason says German also left a daughter behind. I would like for her to have a conversation with her daughter who wakes up at night screaming for her mom who asks why her mom isn't here as of me filming this they haven't been found yet their family is very concerned now let's talk about the theories okay so basically there are three main theories that i want to talk about i want to say is this a cult or not number two is rashad in any way responsible or connected to these murders. And then the last one is uh, whether or not he's actually guilty. So let's start with the, the cult thing. Is it a cult or not? Well, depends how you define cult. There are certain things that say, define, isolate you from the family, make them be like the number one person that you believe in, uh, financial uh, sort of dependence on them, things like that not able to leave, blah, blah, blah. There's many things. In this case, I think it's it's a little bit different when it's mostly online, although he does have that school. It doesn't seem like they all live with him. Like with, with Nature Boy, he had a lot of them with him living all the time. In this situation, he has like a wife and, and his kid, and then they also sometimes have like, like a sister-wife situation. Um... So I don't know, but it, it seems like they meet up a lot and there is the school, but they're not all together in one place like it was with the nature boy situation. The fact that, that he is saying he's God and all this and they believe him, they follow him. I feel like it's really unique when it becomes online because it's like, maybe we need to change the definition of it when it comes to the online thing. It's different. I would say it's not, it's, you know, you know what I think? Okay. I think it's not, maybe maybe it's not a cult, but it's cultish. But I don't know. You let me know. It, the families of the people who are involved feel like it's a cult. So I don't know. You tell me. Rashad says it's not a cult. His followers say it's not a cult. Their family, the police, a lot of other people say it's a cult. So that's that. You decide. Uh, let's talk about the um, the murders. Because this is the part that I really think is like, complicated because legally he's not responsible. He hasn't been charged nothing. He didn't say to do it, right? It's not like he said, you know, kill your family, kill people and rob them. He didn't say that. Also, there's a lot of people that follow him and there's three out of a lot of those people that did this. So it's, it just so happens that those people were, had the capacity to do that and they happened to follow him rather than anyone who follows him is likely to do that. I think the more risk that is likely to happen is what we're seeing happen more often, which is people just isolate themselves, disappear from their family, go off grid, which maybe makes it a cult. Now that I'm thinking and talking out loud, I'm like, okay, probably is a cult, but he's probably not responsible for their the murders that occurred. Now, what about his crimes? I truly, literally, 
do not know the truth. It's do, what do I choose to believe? Because I don't, I don't have access to know exactly what happened. According to him, she did this out of spite. According to the baby mama, he's gross and, you know, he doesn't even brush his teeth. I'm mad I'm not with him. He don't brush his teeth. We don't know the specifics. The specifics haven't been revealed of like what actually specifically he's being accused of. But when it comes to that, what we do know is that he was found guilty. Is it hard for me to believe that like someone would do an SA thing? No, it's not hard for me to believe. You know, statistically, uh, you know, people who claim that it's happened, it's very little. But of the false claims, and I learned this when I was doing the Lori Vallow video, of false claims of SA from a child saying that a parent or a parental figure did this, which happened, it usually is an allegation that isn't said directly from the child to an outsider or teacher or something, but rather the mother relaying the child told her this against the person who she's no longer with. But also statistically in general, false accusations are rare. I don't know. I hope it's not true. It would suck that he went to prison for it. And it would suck if it's true because then that happened to the little girl. You know what I mean? It's all bad. Me personally, personally, if you ask me personally, I don't know if he did it, but there's one thing that I didn't like that like made a red flag go up, which is when he was talking about her oldest daughter that was involved in sex trafficking and he called her like a whore or a slut or something. And she was like 14 at the time. When I met Darshell, her oldest daughter, Dariah Smith, who was another slut, just like her mom, the bitch was 14 with tattoos running away. Even if she was acting out sexually, like, why would you call her that? Like, clearly she's been through something for a child, a teenage, young teenager to do that. Something is wrong. You know what I mean? I don't, I, I just, I really, really did not like that at all. And I found that to kind of make me think like, is like, it tells me a little bit how he thinks and I don't like that. So does that mean that he's guilty of the other thing? No but I'm just saying is a red flag for me. I would love to know what you guys think about this whole situation. And, um, it's crazy. It's crazy. I wonder where they are and if they're going to get found and what's going to happen with that. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much to Scentbird for supporting my channel again and again and again. Please check out the link in the description. And thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.